Hey guys, so one of the questions that I was asked in the last video is how to floss. And that is very important because most people ask me how to floss. I can't get my hands in there. I feel like my teeth are too close. And I always get the floss and show them that if I can get in there in your mouth and floss for you, you definitely can. So the correct way of flossing is that you have to wrap it around two of your fingers, get inside in between your teeth, but it's not only go in and come out. You have to wrap it around the neck of the tooth. So if this is the tooth, the floss go in, wraps around the leg, comes out, and then goes in again, wraps around the neck of the next tooth and comes out. That way you clean under your gums. The next thing I hear from my patients regularly is that I don't floss because I'm worried it's going to create gaps between my teeth. And my answer always is that to create gap between your teeth, your dentist or orthodontist have to use braces and wires. It's not that easy to create gaps. A piece of floss, which is basically just a ribbon of floss, it cannot, it doesn't have the power to create gaps between your teeth. So do not worry. Even if you floss and you see gaps, that's just because the floss has removed the gums and the food and the plaque. That gap should be there. So floss doesn't have the power to create gaps or space in between your teeth. Although if you're using interdental brushes and you use a very large size, yes, you can damage your gum away. I don't floss because it causes my gums to bleed. Remember, it believe because you never flossed and this is the first time you're flossing. Your gums are inflamed. There's lots of food and bacteria and germs under them. And you probably haven't had a dental cleaning in a long time. If you floss regularly and you get it clean every six months, you basically won't have gum inflammation. If there is no inflammation, there will be no bleeding. The bleeding is just a sign of inflammation or gingivitis which means your gums are unhealthy. It doesn't mean leave them to their own and make them worse. It means pay more attention to that. The next one is what is the order? Do I floss first or do I brush my teeth first? If you floss at all during the day, that's fantastic. But if you floss first and then brush your teeth, that's better because when you floss, you get the food out from in between your teeth and you allow the toothpaste to go in between, rinse through, and clean them. So always floss first, then brush your teeth, and then get it to bed. Remember that it's very important to brush your teeth at night time and in the morning. We have a saying that says, if you want to keep your teeth, brush your teeth at night. If you want to keep your friends, brush them in the morning. You brush at night because when you sleep, you have less saliva in your mouth, and you are more prone to getting decays and cavities. Saliva has a lot of defense mechanisms, so it's always protecting your teeth. When you sleep and wake up in the morning and you see dry in your mouth, it's because when you sleep, there is less saliva in your mouth, which means less protection. So very important to floss and brush at night tight, but also brush your teeth in the morning because the mouth has been dry for a while and definitely smells. And the last one is, what about water flossers? Now, I have to mention here that nothing can replace a physical ribbon floss because a physical floss is physically removing the platinum bacteria from in between your teeth. Water flossers are good, but complementary. They're good to use together with the floss. Why is that? When you are flossing your teeth, in between your teeth, there are these little triangles where your teeth come together. The floss goes rub the teeth and neck of the tooth and physically remove plaque bacteria and germs. When you are using water flossers, the water is jetting in between. So it's not really doing what the floss does. Although if you are too lazy to floss or you physically cannot, still using any means of flossing and getting the food out is better than not doing it. What are some other ones? There is the floss in between the stitch. So you can get the stick and get to the very back, especially for people who tell me I cannot get my hand to the back. It is very important not to only floss the front teeth, but also the back. So if you cannot do it, the stick can help you. Same with interdental brushes. If you have braces on, or you have those big stick hangers, or you cannot get to the back, you can use the interdental brushes. They're not the friend of the environment, but they will do the job. It is important to choose the size of your interdental brush correctly. If your teeth are very close together, you better use a very small one, hot size double zero or zero, because you don't want to damage the gum that's in between your teeth. In the long term, you can make it shrink and go down. 
if there's gaps between your teeth and you use a very small size, you're not even going to clean that. So you need a size that fits between your own teeth. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.